Hello everyone and welcome to Medford Anywhere Learning TV. We're glad you're tuned in. We want to give a shout out to our friends at Southern Oregon PBS, KTVL, KDRV, and the Dove Network. Thank you for hosting us on your station. In the Medford School District, we have one shared vision and that we believe that all are learning and learning is for all. And what better place to do that than right here on Medford Anywhere Learning TV. Hi, I'm Katie Cutsforth and I'm a kindergarten teacher. Super excited to share kindergarten stuff with you. So excited, in fact, I brought a colleague with me. Hi, I'm Kristen Robinson and I teach kindergarten. Today's episode is going to be a little different than those you may have seen with Katie and I in the past. We are going to be talking to you, the parents, and to our kiddos about all the things that you might wanna think about having ready for kindergarten registration and for kindergartners that are incoming next year, the things that are gonna be exciting and new for you. One of the first things that you'll wanna do is locate your school. So depending on where you live, you'll wanna find your school district's website. If you have internet access, go ahead and look that up. Look for the school that's closest to you. You can use your address and use School Finder. You can also look for kindergarten on most district websites. If you don't have internet access, you can get a phone number for your local school district. The more information that you can get, the better. And another really important thing, parents, is you will need a copy of your child's birth certificate. This needs to be an original copy from the state in which they were born. If you don't have one, you can contact your pediatrician and they will have a letter for you that you can submit to the school. Now kids, when you help mom and dad with this part, make sure your birth certificate doesn't look like this because Katie, this is actually my dog's birth certificate. That won't work. No, you want something that shows either the state's name at the top, this one's the state of California, or the county, it says the county name at the top. This shows that they are official birth certificates. These are the types of things you're going to need to submit to the school that you're going to attend. Something else that you might need from your pediatrician's office is a record of your child's shots. So it'll be under immunization records. You might be able to look online, but if you're already checking with your pediatrician to make sure that your child is current, then you can get a record of your shots. Now, boys and girls at home, I know shots kind of hurt and I'm so sorry, but it's important to be healthy when we come to school. And another thing you'll need is your proof of your address. Now, you might think a driver's license is something that you can bring and it might vary from state to state. However, in the state of Oregon, we ask that you bring a utility bill, a proof of payment for housing, or you could even bring a vehicle registration form. The other thing that is super important is a health history. You will be asked to fill out a form that tells us a little bit about your kiddos. If they have a prescription, or if they have food allergies, or if they have anything that we need to know about in terms of medical health. And Katie, the other thing, I know we've talked about this a lot. Kids, I want you to listen too. It's a very important for the school to have a few different contact numbers in case of emergencies. Isn't that right, Katie? That's exactly right. Just in case we can't get a hold of you, our school office will want to know other people that we can get a hold of. If your child needs a ride home, if your child needs a change of clothes, it's important that we know someone else that we can get a hold of. That's super important. It is very important, Katie, and one of the things that you may notice when you come, especially at the beginning of the year, is you may have to show your identification when you're picking up your child or if you're picking up another child or one of your contacts is picking up your child from school. And keep in mind that when you fill out registration paperwork, there's often a form that's going to ask you a little bit about school history. And we know that not all kids go to preschool before kindergarten, and that's okay but you may see this in there and just fill us in where they went to daycare or they had preschool. And kiddos, this is your chance to shine. Let people know what you learned in preschool or in your daycare center. You can also let us know who your friends are. That's super important to us as the teachers to know who your important friends are. Now families, you may be wondering what a kindergarten day is gonna look like. And so we call that our schedule. It's broken up into little parts, but we do start with breakfast. Boys and girls, you can eat breakfast at school if you want to. You can also have lunch. Lunch is one of my favorite times at school because not only do we have a cafeteria where you can choose different things to eat, but you can bring your lunch to school. Kids, you can see I have my own lunchbox. 
and parents, you want to make sure that you have something that closes if you can because it keeps the lunch safe. And a lot of times in the classroom, we put all the lunch boxes in one central place. And inside my lunch box, you see my name, Kristen Robinson. This makes it so I know exactly which lunch box is mine. And believe it or not, even though we think we all know which one is ours, a lot of them look the same. And then inside, I have containers to store my food. And in a little bit, we're going to give you some tips on different containers and opening and closing them when you're at school. Something else to know about our schedule, moms and dads, this one's for you. We really try and structure our day between structured learning, like reading, math, social studies, science, all that good stuff. But then kids, here's the best part. We also get to feed some things in there. We get to have art and PE and music and computers and library. And for computers, parents, your child will be asked to sign a form just agreeing that they're going to use safe computer behavior for sure. And the other thing that we want to talk about is buses and pickups and all of those different things that are going to happen when you're at a new school. So you might be wondering, parents, where do I pick up my child? That's something you will coordinate with your teacher. For our bus kiddos, bus routes and bus numbers are actually released right before the start of school. And you can check with the district before school starts to find out where exactly you will be dropping off your child to get on the bus and where they will be dropped off in the afternoon back to you. There's also different after-school programs that you can choose from, and you can check with your school. Every district is a little bit different, but there's lots of options, so be sure mm -hmm. and check. Next, what I wanna do with you is I wanna read a book, and it's called The First Day of Kindergarten. So parents, get your child ready so they can listen to The First Day of Kindergarten on the first day of kindergarten. On the first day of kindergarten. Oh, I noticed something here. I noticed something also, Katie. She looks like she's a little sleepy. Here is a good time to talk about setting an alarm and getting to bed early every night before you go to school. On the first day of kindergarten. On the first day of kindergarten, I thought it was so cool. I see something cool on this page. I do too. I love that she has her closed toed shoes on and she has a backpack, Katie, that's big enough to hold her lunchbox and her Friday folder. Riding the bus to my school. On the second day of kindergarten, I thought it was so cool making lots of friends, and riding my bus to school. On the third day of kindergarten, I thought it was so cool, counting up to 10, making lots of friends, and riding my bus to school. On the fourth day of kindergarten, I thought it was so cool, running in a race, counting up to 10, making lots of friends, and riding my bus to school. On the fifth day of kindergarten, I thought it was so cool, singing a song, running in a race, counting up to 10, making lots of friends, and riding my bus to school. On the sixth day of kindergarten, I thought it was so cool, sliding down the slide, singing a song, running in a race, counting up to 10, making lots of friends, and riding the bus to my school. Whoa, this sounds fun. On the seventh day of kindergarten, I thought it was so cool, sorting by shapes, sliding down a slide, singing a song, running in a race, counting up to 10, making lots of friends, and riding the bus to my school. On the eighth day of kindergarten, I thought it was so cool sharing a story, sorting by shapes, sliding down the slide, singing a song, running in a race, counting up to 10, making lots of friends, and riding the bus to my school. On the ninth day of kindergarten, 
I thought it was so cool. Painting a picture, sharing a story, sorting by shapes, sliding down the slide, singing a song, running in a race, counting up to 10, making lots of friends, and riding the bus to my school. On the 10th day of kindergarten, I thought it was so cool, laughing at lunch, painting a picture, sharing a story, sorting by shapes, sliding down the slide, singing a song, running in a race, counting up to 10, making lots of friends, and riding the bus to my school. On the 11th day of kindergarten, I thought it was so cool, jumping rope in gym, laughing at lunch, painting a picture, sharing a story, sorting by shapes, sliding down the slide, singing a song, running in a race, counting up to 10, making lots of friends, and riding the bus to my school. On the 12th day of kindergarten, I thought it was so cool going on a field trip, jumping rope in gym, laughing at lunch, painting a picture, sharing a story, sorting by shapes, sliding down the slide, singing a song, running in a race, counting up to 10, making lots of friends, and riding the bus to my school. We love school. I love that book, Katie. And I love that there were friends at lunch with lunch boxes and there were friends that were having cafeteria meals. It showed all the different things that happened in a day at kindergarten at school. They had PE, they had music, and did you see in the book they were learning with hands-on activities. It is so exciting to think about going to kindergarten. I really love that Katie read us a really great book. Now we're gonna talk about a few more things that you can do to get your child ready for kindergarten. One of the most important routines you can start is by setting a bedtime. Have this be something that you begin two weeks before school's going to start. With having the bedtime at the same time every night, that gets your child ready for the day ahead of them the next day. And kiddos, you could even ask mom and dad or whoever is taking care of you to set an alarm clock. That way, not only do you get to hear something really interesting in the morning when you wake up, but you get used to getting up at the same time every day. Another really super fun part of kindergarten kids is picking out your clothes and getting dressed. Parents, it's super important that your kids understand how to zip things to open them and close them and button them, especially because they'll be using the restroom by themselves. Another thing to remember is your sandals and flip-flops are great to wear over the weekend, but they're not really appropriate for school because a lot of times we're outside and we need clothes to choose on. And you could even start practicing tying your shoes at home, kids. That's a great thing to do before you go off to school and you could wow all your new friends and your new teacher. When you go to kindergarten, you get to choose some of your own foods during lunchtime. I have some really neat utensils here. These are called tongs, and you're going to see these on the salad bar. Parents, a thing that you can do at home to help with not only fine motor skills, but getting ready to choose their own food at school is to help them. Use some tongs if you have them. You could even pick up some toys. It doesn't necessarily have to be food. And slotted spoons. You'll see these on our salad bar as well. Those are things that we're going to use to pick up fruit. And then a lot of times, kids, we have applesauce on the salad bar. Of course, it wouldn't have slots in it because it would go through. But it's real important to know that when you use a salad bar or any area where other people are touching food, you only want to touch the end of the utensil handle. And when you put it back, you put it on the edge. And you're going to get to learn all of this when you go to school. And then... The best part, if you're choosing lunch at school, there's more than one choice. So parents, really important to help your kids start to make choices. Maybe ask them, would you like this or would you like that for dinner? But just don't make something different for everybody in your household. Katie, what else would you like to talk about? 
Something else that's really fun to choose when you're coming to school is your backpack. I love a new backpack. Now, moms and dads, these backpacks that are little, gosh, they sure are cute. But I'll tell you a little secret. A lot of times, some papers are going to come home with your child that are in a big envelope like this. But that doesn't work so well. And teachers, we don't like to fold the envelope so that it'll fit in the backpack. Because then what happens is it'll come home looking like that. And nobody wants that. Because sometimes there's really important papers that are coming home for your child. So it's really best to have a backpack. Whoa, look how big that is. This has an A on it because it belongs to my daughter. But what I wanted you to see was that it's big enough to fit those big envelopes and important papers. Some other things that you'll want to make sure fit inside the backpack is the lunch pail. Lunch pails can be so cool. I love how my friend Kristen wrote her name on hers. So important that you write your name on your lunch pail. Here's a couple things in front of me that you might find in a lunch pail. Now, hydro flask, water bottle, anything that your child can use during lunch. They're awesome. We love them. Teachers sometimes end up with a leaky mess because the lid doesn't get put on all the way. Something you can practice at home is just making sure the straw's connected, make sure that you put the lid on tight, and also make sure that you close the top. Then this water bottle can easily be put in your backpack. Some other things that you might like to put in your child's lunch, I heard my friend Kristen talk about applesauce. I love applesauce. Containers like this are perfect. Usually children can open it themselves. It's okay if they can't close it because most often this will go in the garbage. Some other things to think about, granola bars are awesome. Super hard to open sometimes. You can have your child practice opening them at home. Something else you can even do a step further is open it, cut it into bite-sized pieces, and then put it in a Ziploc bag. Ziploc bags can be really tricky for kids to open and close. Something you can practice at home is just opening a Ziploc bag, putting things inside. I hope this fits. And then making sure that they feel that click. All Ziploc bags are a little bit different. So you just want to make sure that it's closed. Sometimes things leak inside their lunch pail and then we send it back to you in a beautiful mess. Something else you can think about Little containers like this that are easy to measure snacks, easy to hold things, sometimes not so easy to close the lid. Another thing that you can practice having your children do at home, just like markers, I love to listen for the click. So boys and girls at home, get ready to listen with me. Oh yeah, that was a good one. Then I know that if there's fruit salad in here or even salad dressing, I'll know that it's not gonna leak because I heard that lid. Now, I don't know anyone that doesn't like cookies, mm -hmm. teachers included. But moms and dads at home, maybe two cookies would be a good amount to put in a lunch. I checked to make sure that my Ziploc bag was closed. This is something that would be perfect to keep at home for after school snack. But if it's a special day or maybe your child saw that you had Oreos in the cabinet or cookies in the cabinet, I would say it's okay to send two, maybe not the whole package. But this also can be in my backpack. And oh, look at that big envelope where important papers might be. I'm gonna put that in my backpack too. Moms and dads at home, be sure and get in a habit of checking your child's backpack. You never know when a treasure is gonna be in there. I really love that Katie got everything into her backpack and packed up ready to go because at the end of each day, your child parents will be responsible for packing their things up to go home. Another really important thing that you can practice at home with your kids is one and two step directions. Now in school, a lot of times we ask them to repeat their directions. So if I was to say, okay kids, we are going to line up, then I would say, what are we going to do? And they'd say, line up. And it's really great because I know that they are paying attention and they're listening to me. Another thing you could do is you could say, all right, kids, it's time to get in the car. We're going to go to the store. Put your coats on. They know that they're going to be leaving. The direction part was it's time to get in the car. First, put your coats on. So the kids would go and put their coats on and then you would get them ready to get into the car. You could even have them practice lining up to walk to the car if you have more than one child. And kids, this is a really good time to show off putting on your coat or putting on your shoes, whatever you need to leave your home to go run an errand with mom or dad. Another handy thing that you can practice at home 
is have your kiddos sit on the carpet and listen to these instructions or read them a book because the more they build their attention level, the easier it will be for them when they get into school. They'll be in a large group of kiddos usually on the carpet and sometimes it's a little bit distracting. So this is a perfect opportunity to talk to them about things they can do to focus. Another really important thing that you can work on with your kids at home is large motor skills. This is running and jumping and skipping, jump roping if you have one, and practicing standing on one leg because balance is very important. And kids, all of this might look like practice, but it's really super fun play. Because when you get to school, you're gonna get to have recess and PE. You'll be ready when you practice all of your large motor skills. Katie, I see you have some crayons and scissors over there. That's right, Kristen. Crayons and scissors and pencils, all of those things use fine motor, fine muscles. Those are the little muscles, like in our fingers. So there's a couple things that you can do, moms and dads at home, to practice with pencil grip and proper scissor use. I know it's hard, but sometimes when I get really excited to color and I choose a crayon, I want to grab it with all my might so I can color and color and color, but whoa, that's not going to work for very long. A good thing to think about is just pinch. You can just take two fingers like this, grab that crayon. You can even tuck something in the rest of your hand. It's really hard to do, but with practice, piece of cake. Something else to think about, moms and dads, is scissors. I know scissors can be scary because you might get a haircut or a new hole in your favorite shirt. We don't want any of those things. We do work on these skills at school, but it's something you can help teachers with by starting at home. If you have a pair of child scissors, what you'll notice, one opening is smaller than the other. The smaller opening is for your thumb. And if you go like this, yay, cutting is so fun. Your thumb is already going up. And if you put that hole going up, you're already ready. Put your thumb in, put two fingers, maybe three, and make sure that your child cuts away from them. That way, oh gosh, it's getting close to my hair. Oh no, getting close to my shirt. My mom won't like that, so I better turn it around and go some more. Super fun to practice cutting coupons, cutting the newspaper if you have one, cut anything they can as long as they're having fun. Another really important thing to do, parents, is to read with your child. I remember being a small little girl and having my mom read to me every night before bedtime. This was not only a good bonding time, but it allowed me to get ready for school and it also reinforced what I learned at school. And kids, it's really fun to be able to pick out the book that you would like to hear at bedtime. I love that my friend Kristen mentioned choosing a book at bedtime. Parents, bedtime is so important. I know it doesn't seem like it, but kids need a lot of sleep to get ready for the next day of school. It is important to try and have the same bedtime every day as you're getting their alarm clock ready for the next morning. It's the perfect opportunity. Talk about what you did that day, what they enjoyed, what they're looking forward to the next day. Make sure that they're comfortable. Make sure they feel safe. Make sure that they're definitely ready for the next day of school. We are so thankful that you joined us today. And we talked about a lot of things, but we know one thing for sure, kindergarten is the most exciting time because it's the beginning of your school journey, both for parents and kids. Just some things to remember that all districts may vary on the start date as well as what they require for forms. And it's also a really good idea to stay in touch with your district so you know what day school starts. And finally, make sure you write down any questions you may have because we know as kindergarten teachers, it's a scary time for parents too. So kids, make sure you help your parents feel a little more comfortable about you going to school. We really appreciate you joining us on Medford Anywhere Learning TV. Thanks for tuning in to Medford Anywhere Learning TV. Medford School District is a place where all are learning and learning is for all. So nice to meet you too, Dr. Champion, and yes, I have a couple of questions. This one's quite serious. All right. So from one champion to another, who are you going to root for? Well, what are my options? South yeah. Medford Panthers, 
uh, North tor uh, Tornadoes. Whatever team is representing Medford, I guarantee that's the team that I'm going to be rooting for, for sure. If you got to make a holiday, what would it be? Uh, make a holiday? I think I would go with Color Day. Late January, when it's real dark and cold outside, we have our holiday, which is Color Day. And on Color Day, everybody wears their bright colors, like your bright pink. All the cakes are, are multicolored cakes, and there's, there's, there's confetti and, and things going up in rainbows, and you name it, there's color everywhere. And we take the gray world and we make it colorful. How's that sound? Good. <laughs> it's pretty good. Thanks. Uh, what state are you from? I grew up and spent um, most of my life in Texas. I was born in a small town right in the center of Texas. I started teaching um, as an elementary, at an elementary school in um, Houston, Texas. And I taught elementary theater arts for a number of years in the Austin area. Have you been on Pottermore before? Have I been on what? Pottermore. What is that? It's a Harry Potter app. Yes. So you can take quizzes on it and like, what's your Patronus and Yes. What's your house? What's your Patronus? Uh, it's a type of dog. I ah, think it's a terrier. That's so awesome. I'm, I'm afraid I'd get on there and be like my Patronus would be like a chipmunk or something. I mean, I want something ferocious and, and incredible. I mean, I'm, I'm nervous to do this whole Potter, what's it called? Pottermore. 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 That's awesome. That, what house are you? What house are you? Hufflepuff. All right, Hufflepuff, that's awesome. I've always appreciated Hufflepuff. Other countries, such as Finland, they have technology classes, such as coding and computing. Do you think our school district could have the budget to implement those kinds of classes in schools? Great question. As a matter of fact, it's something that the Medford School District has prioritized over the last few years. We've got, uh, for example, the Chromebook rollout that's happened starting this year with ninth grade, um, which offers an opportunity for a tool for um, our students and teachers to be able to access technology very easily, literally in their hands. However, we know that coding is a, a skill that, that can grow and it's definitely something that we are considering looking toward for the future. The, uh, my son happens to be a computer programmer and so this is very near and dear to my heart as well so that's a great question. What is your favorite type of car? My favorite type of car is one that runs, that has an air conditioner and and that's pretty much it. I also like good gas mileage. Get me there, get me there safely, and have an air conditioner. What's the first change you want to propose as superintendent and why? One of the things that I, I believe, John, is that it's important that we that there's not this, this idea that I'm going to bring all this whole new set of ideas um, into the system, that actually what, what we need to do is together um, with teachers and with principals and with students and with all of us, the board coming together and saying, here's who we want, who, here's who we want to be, here's, who, here's where we want to go, and then let's talk about then how we get there. So this idea that I'm some sort of magician who has all the tricks to make all those things happen, that's not the way it works. What happens is we together have the best ideas together. And so one of the pieces that I want to bring is to make sure that we're doing that, that we're bringing the voices of teachers and students and principals, central office folks, and the community together so that we can make some things make some things better. Do you go to different schools or were you a teacher? Yeah, so I do go to go to different no, schools. No, like are, are you a sub or a teacher? Oh, got it. So I, uh, I am not a sub or a teacher right now. I do sometimes go into classrooms though. I love that and I love the opportunity to uh, hang out with students and do some teaching. I, I, I love it. And it makes me thrilled that for our teachers who do that every day because it's incredible. They do they do incredible hard work, wouldn't you say? Yes, this, yes they do. They, they do. They really do. They, I agree. I they agree. do really hard work every day to make sure their students are safe and healthy and not getting sick. And learning. And learning as well. And learning. I mean, all those things is what a great teacher does. And so getting the opportunity to go see the teachers do that is one of my favorite things to do, for sure. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it's true.